What is event sourcing? There's a lot of terms thrown around with it that can be pretty confusing. I'm Derek Comartin from CodeOpinion.com. I'm gonna explain the core principles around event sourcing, but probably more importantly, the terminology used. By the end of this video, you'll be able to answer the question, what is event sourcing? And what a better sponsor to have for a video like this than EventStoreDB. EventStoreDB is a new category of operational database built for event sourcing, CQRS, and event-driven microservices. For more on EventStoreDB, check out the link in the description. So the first thing to start with are events. What are events? Well, they're just things that have happened within your system, within your domain. They're really just a representation of, okay, it's a fact. This has actually happened. Something occurred within our domain. So as an example, we have a timeline here of a warehousing system. One of the events is a product received. And we have different data associated with this event that we've recorded because this is what actually happened. Product was received, received a quantity of 10 on this particular date. Then another event occurs. We have another product receive a quantity of 10 on this particular date. Now there's different types of events that have occurred. We actually shipped product out of a particular quantity on a particular date. And then we had an inventory adjustment gets done. So our project was adjusted with a particular quantity, a particular date, and maybe a reason code. So we have a series of events, things that have happened within our system. They're named appropriately to one way is that they're done in the past tense. They're named in the past tense because again, they're facts, something that's actually happened. And probably more importantly, is that we're recording explicitly what happened in terms of what the business cares about, their business facts. And that's events. At their core, they're a representation of a business fact. Sure, you may have additional metadata or other things associated to your events, but really when it comes down to it, it's just something has occurred within your domain and you're recording that as an event. So we talked about events. Now let's talk about event streams. Before we even get really get into them, I really wanna illustrate here, if we're say looking at a relational database, a table, even if you're thinking of this collection or a document, whatever the case may be, it's all kind of the same, is that we're talking about, we have three different rows here. Let's say we have one particular product of ABC123. It has a quantity of 59 and we have recording the last date we received it and the last date we shipped it. We have two other products, we're doing the exact same thing. When I was illustrating before our series of events, that series of events is for one of those products. Oftentimes we'll group them and that's our grouping is our event stream. We have the series of events for a particular product. So that may be that particular stock of ABC123. And then we have a completely separate event stream for any other different product of YYZ987 as the example. So when you're thinking about events, they belong generally to a stream. So how do you define event streams and what events go in what stream? In my example, I was really modeling this around some domain concept of an inventory item. And I was doing that per unique inventory item. So each individual SKU or product ID, it had its own stream. It really depends on how you model this. If you're thinking about domain-driven design, you may model things around aggregates and aggregate routes and think about those related entities and that may be ultimately how you define an event stream. It really is depending on how you model it. Another couple important notes to make about event streams is that events within a stream are in a unique position. That's why I was showing them as a series and saying them as a series of events. Lastly, when I was talking about modeling, some of the way that you might model this is depending on the life cycle, the length of time that a stream is really active for. A lot of things in business systems kind of have a life cycle and your streams will really kind of dictate that. So you may have a stream that's long lived with a few number of events, or you may have a stream that's short lived with a large number of events. That's often part of the modeling process is how you define these streams is by their life cycle. So we have events, we have event streams, but now let's talk about projections and read models. So we have these events, these series of events that occurred, but if I ask the question, what is our current quantity on hand right now? How would you answer that? In some reasonable way, you think you're about you're building your application, what you would have to do is you'd have to replay and relook at the entire event stream from the beginning to answer that. So I'd see we have a product received of 10, so we're at 10. We received more of five, so now I'm at 15. We shipped some product out, so I have to reduce that. Now we're at nine. And we did a product adjustment where we magically found some more product of 50. So now our quantity on hand right now is 59. So our projection for our read model 
is really a transformation of our series of events in our event stream and transforming that into a shape that we actually care for some given use case. So in my example of wanting to know the quantity on hand, we can take that series of events, process it, and let's say we're recording that and storing that in a relational database. So we have some table with a row per event stream in this case, where I have ABC123, we're recording maybe the quantity on hand, which is 59, and let's just say we're also recording the last received and the last shipped. We may choose to have a projection for a different use case where we just store that in a document store or some cache, and it's just, we're just recording the quantity on hand. Maybe we have something completely different where we wanna record maybe some, again, relational database for reporting purposes, who knows where this is. For a given event stream, we just wanna record for any given month what the total number of received is. So that's a different use case entirely. You can also, again, it's kind of limitless of where you're actually storing this of what the projection is for your read model. It's just changing the shape. Maybe when we do that product adjustment, that's really kind of is really a summary of something that's happened because we went and physically counted all the inventory on the shelf. Maybe that turns into something else where we then have, that's the starting of another event stream that's for a summary and we have a stock counted event there. Because we're recording explicit events, the data around the facts of things that actually happen in our system, what we're doing with projections is we're deriving state. We're making that transformation into some use case of that data that we care about for query purposes, for reporting purposes, read model purposes. That could be transforming it into something specific for your UI, or like I mentioned, specific for reporting purposes. You're deriving state from a series of events. So I mentioned projections for read models where you may be persisting that for a given use case, but there's also projections for your write model. And this is often where you want to read your event stream so you can build up a projection to get derive some type of state so you know if a given action you want to perform is valid. In my example of my warehouse, maybe I have a method here that ship product where we say, okay, if the quantity that you want to ship is more than the quantity on hand that we have, plus say some given buffer, then we don't allow you to do this. So how do we know what the current state is? We're, right, we're in our write model here, we can do the same thing. We can read our event stream and build up and derive that state into a projection. So what I have here is on this load method, we're accepting a list of events, we're just iterating over them and we're calling the apply method for each type of event. So for example, product shipped, this is how we're just uh, decreasing our quantity of hand. If we have a product that was received, we're increasing our quantity on hand and the same thing for our inventory adjustment. We're deriving state, we're building up state for our event stream, so then we can apply this logic to make sure that whatever given action we want to uh, occur, are we in a valid state? So how do you build projections? How do you build these remodels? One way of doing this is with subscriptions. You wanna be reactive and know when an event occurs that maybe you need to do that transformation and update your read model. So I have this projector here that's doing exactly that. It has a subscription, it's a listener to one of these events that gets appended to our event stream. Then we can take that event, do our transformation and update our read model. But our subscriptions aren't just for creating projections and there's different ways of doing projections and there's different types of subscriptions. But another point of using subscriptions to these events, to these event streams, are you may wanna notice notify some other part of your system or some other system that something has occurred. So we could have a publisher, which also has a subscription. It's also a listener of our event streams. And maybe it takes that event when it occurs, it does some type of transformation and it publishes that out to RabbitMQ or Kafka so that other types of other parts of our system can be subscribed to that part of the system. I have these dotted lines because that's our boundary. Our event store is our database. It's not data distribution, but we can be using subscriptions to kind of change the shape for read models, but also for publishing out to various other services via something like a message broker of RabbitMQ or something like Kafka and event log. So the core concepts and terminology around event sourcing are events, event streams, projections for read models, projections for your write model. And on the kind of tailor end here, I'm still mentioning it as a way to make this happen, are subscriptions. Now you may be wondering, Derek, I know a little bit of event sourcing and you never mentioned snapshots or snapshotting. And that's because I think a little bit, it's more of an optimization. And I'm gonna have a link to a video that I've done about snapshotting at the end of this video. 
Another really important video that I'm gonna link at the very end of this video, which I highly, highly recommend watching, is the confusion around things like Kafka and how this all fits in the mix and thinking about event-driven architecture and event sourcing and how they're different things for different utilities, although a lot of the terminology kind of gets overlapped and confused a little bit. That video is a little bit longer, but it really gets the gist about what event sourcing is, plus this video, plus what are all the other different utilities for events in the forms of communication. Event sourcing, the best way to describe it, summary to this video, it's about recording facts things that have happened in your system and being able to use those event streams, those series of events to derive state from them. Hopefully this video gave you a lot of the core concepts and terminology about event sourcing. If you're into event sourcing or any topics around software architecture and design, you can join my channel and get access to a private Discord server where you can communicate and chat with other like-minded software developers about software architecture and design. Ask questions, answer questions, just get involved in the community. If you have any other thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. Again, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.